Hello, this is Isaac, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a contact form with Vue.js and WordPress. I'm going to show you how you might integrate Vue in your WordPress applications, how easy and beautiful it is, and why I like it. So let's begin. I have here a basic starter team with Vue.js integrated. You have here a little bit of instructions on how to install it. It's very simple. It comes with a starter component called Welcome, so I changed it a bit. I called it Contact. And I have here some uh, very basic HTML form. I didn't write any view yet. So just change it to contact, like here, here, and the index.php file, just call it contact as well. And I introduced two new libraries. Um, one is Bulma, it's a CSS framework. This is just for styling. And I also have uh, Axis. So just run npm install Axis, npm install Bulma. Axis is for it, it's uh, an Ajax library. And here, with vendor.scss file, you already have this file. So you just need to import Bulma here and just run, run gulp and recompile everything all over again. This is the basic thing. And I have here a, also a backup uh, backend handler for the contact form. So I have here, I registered a REST API uh, route. The method is going to be post. I have, gonna, we have here a callback, send contact form. Now, by the way, um, for simplicity, I'm putting it all in the function.php file, but in real production use, you would probably want to organize it in, your, in a separate folder or even as a plugin. But I just wanted to make it simple. We have here a few fields, full name, email, body, basic validation. If there's an error, we're going to return it. If not, we're going to build a message variable. I'm going to set some headers so we can render HTML in the email, and this is how we will send it. But we won't really send an email. Just but just to show it to you, and it's very simple, by the way, to create a contact form in WordPress. You really don't need a plugin for that. So now let's talk a little bit about Vue.js. So this is like the start of the Vue instance, and we need to give it a, a main ID, which we gave it here, app. And now here we introduce the contact component, which is a single file component. Okay, so we have here a basic form, and this is how it looks like with the Bulma design. Now, imagine you're using jQuery. Probably you would listen to the send click. So on click, you're going to prevent default. You're going to grab the values of these inputs and submit it via Ajax to your form. And it's going to be very simple because this is just a simple form. But what you will, but notice for the steps that you will have to do, you have to first of all interact with the DOM API, which is not so nice. And this is why you use jQuery from the beginning, because it's simpler if you use it. That's why I use it at least. And you also have to make sure that you're going to have unique selectors because you might have more elements in this page, so you want to avoid collisions. So Vue solves those problems. With Vue, you don't deal with the DOM. You just deal with data, with reactive data to be precise. And you will soon understand what this reactivity means. But you don't deal with the DOM API. So we have the Vue instance. And the Vue instance has a data object. Each property in that data object is going to be reactive, meaning that if you update that data, it's going to be reflected in the view wherever it needs to be reflected. And you can go over the documentation. It's very easy to understand. So let's begin. We need to create a data object. And let's just view conventions on how to do it. Now we have here three fields, right? And so let's let's put it all in the form object. It's just going to make it easier for us to submit it later. And I'm going to set them with empty values, the full name, email, and the body. And very basic so far. And we can see here the view dev tools, which is also a very useful tool for debugging or just making sure that everything is working. So we have the body, the email, and the full name. So we were talking about reactivity. So reactivity is something that if I type a name here, well, I would like to map it to this object because I'm going to submit this form object to the back in the WordPress API, right? That's what we're going to do. So view offers a form input bindings. V model. This is basically a two-way binding. And just to simplify this, the two-way binding means if I type something here, it will be reflected in form that full name. If I change form that full name manually, it will be reflected in the input. So let's take this for a test. So V model. We have some shortcuts from PHP Storm, 
and form that full name. Why form that full name? Because this is a form object and we have the full name property. So we are going to map this input to the full name. Let's check if it's working. See, full name, Mike. Perfect, it's working. So this is like one way from the input to the object. Let's do the opposite way. So let me set it here. This one, the basically, this is the last lifecycle event mounted when everything is ready. And Mike, let's refresh it, Mike. So if I change the full name here, it will be reflected here. And if I change it here, it will be reflected here. This makes our life much easier. And we're not dealing with the DOM. We're only dealing with data. It's more natural. Okay, so now that we have this behind, let's just simply make the same for all the elements. Okay. Just run a small test, just to make sure that everything is working. Here it is, working, great. Okay, so we have the form and we might have errors, you know, when we submit the, the form. So let's just make a, an empty array, because it's gonna be empty at the beginning. And we need to have a URL. So let me just copy the URL. I'm hard coding it. It's not really the best solution, but it's fine. This is simple. Okay, so we have the URL, we have the form object, we have the errors. Now we need to listen to the click event. So there's a clicks here. I want to prevent default and submit it. We're going to do it the same way, but just a bit differently than with jQuery. Because view, that, view has directives. V on, V on click. And if we take a look at their documentation, we have event handling. And here is V on directive to listen to DOM events. V on click, it can be V on input, V on key down. You have all the events that you want. This is view digest is just JavaScript. Now there's also a shortcut for the V on, just the strudel sign. And we want, we want to also prevent default. So we can do dot prevent. Look, look how elegant this is. Very elegant, very easy. So click dot prevent, and we're gonna call a method called submit form, which we will create. Now with view.js methods, they go into the method object, as you can guess. This is a convention of view. You must use methods. You cannot call it something else. Submit form. So let's just make sure that it's working. Submitted. Send, 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 and it's preventing default. Great. So now we need to submit the form. Anxious post this.url, this.form, right? That's easier, just as one object, we're gonna submit it. On success, we're just simply gonna console.log, and we would also want the this.errors to be equal to an empty array to reset the errors. And if there's an error, we're gonna catch it, and we're gonna assign the errors to this. So now we need to render the errors. So that's basically going to be a list. It's going to be a simple array. So list rendering. And you can use the v4 directive. And here it is. So I'm going to have here some basic styling. Now, I only want to show it if there is an error. So here, I have a suggestion here, another directive called vf. vf errors.length. So if there's any kind of error, then only show it. If not, don't show it at all. It's not going to be in the DOM. It won't be rendered in the DOM. And then we're going to loop over. This is a very basic list. And here it is. Let's see if we're getting any kind of errors. Okay, let's click send. Oh. Great, working. So this is coming back from the WordPress uh, API, 422, unprocessable entity. And let's take a look at our component, and these are the errors. So if I write here Mike, I click Send, and one goes down. So we're only left with two errors. All done by view. All we are doing is just changing the data. It's reactive, so it will reflect in the view automatically for us. This takes a lot of burden out of our back. 
out of our shoulders. So let's put the email, let's make a successful send. No errors, perfect. And we could also reset the form after if you want to. Okay, so now you saw how it's working. Now what's the benefit of this? You can do it with jQuery quite simply. Again, you're gonna to have to have a bit of worries about unique selectors, but this is a component. I can take this component and if I want it in another page or in the same page, I can just call it again. And these are separate instances, separate. I mean, it's under the same view instance, but these components are separate. They don't know about each other. So if I click here, send, I see here the errors, but they don't exist here. They have no relation with each other. You can communicate with them if you want to uh, via view, via, via view offers it. But in general, you just put it and no worries. You don't have to worry about having unique classes, unique IDs, nothing. It's completely isolated in a way that it's not, there's no way these two are gonna collide in at least the way they are written at the moment. So as you can see here, view is also good for the simple things. It's very easy. With React, React is more low level than this. You will have to write more code to achieve the same goal here. So view here gives you a lot of a boost in terms of productivity. And it suits well to the WordPress world, I think. You know, it's a very lightweight framework. You can integrate it for a contact form, registration form, whatever. You don't have to use your, it in your whole application. Just use it in the parts you want to. And as you can see, this is very easy. I mean, how much typing did we do here? Not much at all. And even if you don't understand view, this should be very clear to you. So we're modeling this input to the object, simple mapping, and view is taking care of everything for us. So I hope this got you excited about view.js. I personally really like it and I'm gonna continue exploring it more and more. If you have any questions, please comment below. Okay, and have a great day.